Today we're offering a sneak peek at GL Studio 6 and how to use the all-new state machine functionality to create the logic to drive our attitude directional indicator example. We'll start with a fresh GL Studio project that has been preloaded with the art assets and behaviors the user will need to create the instrument. GL Studio supports drag and drop behaviors of the assets into the project canvas. In the case of Photoshop files, GL Studio parses the layers of the Photoshop document and automatically creates the appropriate GL Studio objects, giving us the faceplate of our instrument, the horizon indicator, and the adjustment knob. The next item we'll drag in is a standard PNG file with its file extension modified to tell a GL Studio extension script that this is an image file intended for mapping onto a spherical object. This script automatically creates a sphere object and applies the PNG file because the file name contains a .sphere.ping extension. This is a great example of the type of extensibility that users can script themselves to enhance the UI development workflow. Using the multiple 3D views within GL Studio will move the sphere so it's behind the faceplate of the instrument, representing its correct location in 3D space. Pressing the Project Run button automatically generates the code for the project, compiles it, and runs the application on the desktop so we can quickly preview the UI functionality. Not much is happening yet, but we can see that the functionality for the Horizon Control knob is already in place thanks to the Photoshop file. Next, we'll drag in two more PNG files that will represent the background for the joystick and the joystick controller itself. And we'll use GL Studio's alignment tools to get everything centered just right. Now we'll use the new package manager to load in an asset that doesn't currently exist in this project. This is a behavior asset that creates additional properties to drive a joystick. Once we've added the asset to the project, we can browse to and select that asset for use on the polygon object we want to behave like a joystick. Here we can see the new joystick extended functionality on this GL Studio polygon. It now includes parameters for a maximum output value, which will set to 80 out of 100, and a max offset, which will set to 50% of the size of the polygon. When we rerun the application, we can see our joystick controller can now take input events and its travel distance is constrained to 50% of its size, and our other default knob functionality from the Photoshop file persists. Now let's modify that Photoshop file to show the flexible workflow of GL Studio. Selecting the Photoshop icon within GL Studio will open the linked Photoshop file asset. Here we can add additional content such as this fail flag. We'll name it appropriately so GL Studio will identify it as a polygon. And once we hit save in Photoshop, GL Studio senses the update to the linked document and re-imports the file displaying the new object while preserving all the previous manipulations made to the content. Now we'll set up some logic in our project, so movement of the joystick will drive rotational changes on the ADI sphere. We'll use the new functionality within GL Studio 6 to create a state machine within our project to drive this logic. So with the application running, we can see the runtime event log picking up change events. This change tracking helps us easily find the objects we'd like to include in our state machine. In this case, we want to look for changes in the joystick's X or Y position and in turn have those changes modify the ADI's pitch and roll. So 
So when there's a change in the joystick X or Y, we'll want to do a dynamic rotate on the attitude directional indicator ball. Dynamic rotate takes three parameters for rotation around the X, Y, and Z axis. Position changes to the joystick in the X direction should change the rotations about the ADI ball's Z axis or roll, and position changes to the joystick in the Y direction should change the rotation of the ADI ball about the X axis or pitch. Applying these changes to the state machine has an immediate effect on the application without the need to rerun it. This dramatically increases productivity in logic development. Now let's add some logic to drive a translation in the horizon indicator based on the knob rotation. So we'll set the translation using another when block based on changes to the knob position value. We'll start by feeding the knob value directly into the Y value for the horizon line. We can see the immediate effect on the application window. Turning the knob moves the horizon up and down for all positive values above the horizon. However, we want to be able to adjust the horizon level to go below the horizon as well. So we simply need to add an offset to the knob value. Using a math function, we'll modify the position value of the knob by minus 50, which gives our horizon level a range of minus 50 to plus 50, and results in the behavior we're looking for. For larger applications, you may want to separate your logic into different areas, so GL Studio allows you to create multiple state machines to handle different parts of your design. In this case, we want to add more functionality to drive the fail flag on our instrument, so we'll create a separate state machine to handle that logic. We want our fail flag to rotate into view, and to do that, we're going to need to adjust the object's default rotation point from its geometric center to about the top right corner. Since we've changed our geometry, we'll need to rerun the application, but we can see the logic we've previously created is preserved. Now we can start adding logic to the fail flags state machine. In this case, we want it to be a time-based event, so we'll grab that block and set the event to occur every 5 seconds. At that time, we want to dynamically rotate the fail flag about the z-axis to 45 degrees so it's hidden behind the instrument faceplate. After that, we want the fail flag to dynamically rotate with an animation back to 0 degrees along a preset animation curve. In this case, we'll make it rotate back in 1.5 seconds with a bounce out curve. The changes show up immediately in the running application. The fail flag now animates as intended every five seconds via one state machine, while the functionality from the other state machine to drive the joystick and knob logic remains unaffected. There is one more change we need to make to our logic. Notice when we push up on the joystick, the pitch goes up on the ADI. This is the inverse of the behavior we're looking for, so let's correct that. Back on the first state machine, we need to add another math modifier to invert the value of the joystick's Y position so that the pitch value or X rotation on the ADI behaves correctly. After applying this quick modification, we can see that the pitch behavior on the ADI is now inverted based on the joystick's Y position changes. This concludes our sneak peek at GL Studio 6 and the all-new state machine functionality to create logic to drive an example attitude directional indicator.
To learn more about GL Studio, please visit us today at disty.com.